I want to get all eight legs out of this one eight foot long board. Each of the legs is 24 inches long. The problem there is the kerf of the saw. The thickness of the saw is about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to lose that much wood into sawdust. So it's going to make the legs a little bit smaller. So I'm kind of thinking that the legs will be around 23 and a half inches long once I cut this up and I'm gonna have to square them up a little bit after the glue up. Just something to keep in mind is that kerf of the saw and if you can it would be good to get a board that's a little bit longer. Unfortunately this eight foot long board was the longest that they had at the big orange box center. The important thing about doing glue ups like this is to just make sure that you have that glue spread completely across the surface. You don't want any gaps. So here I'm just using basically every clamp in my shop to squeeze this all together. And while that's drying, I can move over to the cherry lumber and cut out the pieces to glue up the top and lower panels of each of the nightstands. When you're edge joining boards together, it's really important that you joint one edge of the board. And that just means cutting it nice and square and flat, removing any of the unevenness or imperfections. So the way I do that is I just shave a little bit off of one edge, square that up, and then I can flip it over and use that squared up side against my rip fence and cut out the actual width. Oh, and if you'd like to make this project yourself, I've got a detailed set of step-by-step -step plans for sale over at shopwwmm.com. I really appreciate your support. Your purchases allow me to keep making project videos like this one. So these three boards make up the upper and lower shelf once I cut them apart. I just thought it would be easier to glue these together into one panel now and then cut that into two. So I spent a little time just kind of arranging these to see what grain pattern looked best, you know, just by kind of shifting them around. And I came up with this setup, which looks pretty good to me. And for once, I've got my clamps and everything all ready to go. So there won't be any surprises. Usually, usually I'm not very prepared when I go to these panel glue ups for some reason. So all I gotta do is put some glue on the edges of each of these boards. these on the top side. Alright, now before I tighten this down, I'm going to put these clamping calls in place. That's what I've got this for, is just to raise this up. Now I can get these underneath here to flatten the boards out that way. These are just boards that I've screwed together and I've got a piece of just plastic packing tape on it so that the glue doesn't stick to it. So I'm gonna put the pressure of these clamps right on these joints or, you know, close to it. Yeah, I should flatten it out. The key to panel glue ups like this is just don't tighten these pipe clamps down too much. If you really put a lot of cranking pressure on those, these panels are likely to kind of buckle a little bit. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. You just need to hold it in place for that glue to dry. So I'm gonna remove these boards so that they don't get glued to the underside. <laughs> Now I can square up that panel. It just barely fits into my saw using my miter gauge. But I needed to use my miter gauge here so that I would have a square reference side. If I were to just put one of those uneven ends up against my rip fence, it would not be a square cut all the way through, most likely. 
Now I can get back to making the legs. Those two maple boards I glued together are an inch and a half thick. So first, I'll just rip these down into one inch wide pieces. Then I can flip those over on their side and cut those down to an inch. And now I can cut these down to their final lengths. And of course, I decided to pick the two types of woods, cherry and maple, that are most prone to burn marks. So I've got a lot of sanding to do on each of these. I try to eliminate burn marks on the table saw as best as possible by using a sharp blade and making sure that it's square to the rip fence, but sometimes it's just inevitable. I'm using a chamfer bit on my router to make a chamfer on each edge of those legs. And I'll chamfer the foot of each of those legs. Now I can cut out all of the aprons and framing pieces. I'm going to use pocket screws to join all of the frame pieces together. I can drill those holes now. These two holes are going to be what holds the lower shelf in place. I need to drill two holes in each of the upper side frame pieces. And this is easily something you could do using a handheld drill. This, using my drill press, is just gonna make it go a little bit faster. So what I need to do here is first drill half inch wide hole about halfway through this board that's making a counter bore that'll just kind of hide the screw. This is what's gonna to attach the top to the frame. Now what I can do is switch out this half inch bit to a quarter inch bit. This is gonna be bigger than the screw I'm gonna be using. So the way this is gonna work is that I'll just use one of these pocket screws with the wide head on it. You could also use a pan head screw or a screw with a washer. And then it's just gonna drop down into that hole and then grab on that little ledge in there. But the thing that this does is this provides some movement back and forth for expansion and contraction of the wood. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. I'm putting chamfers on the lower edge of each of those frame pieces. It just gives it a nicer feel if you're to grab the nightstand. I don't want to put any chamfers on the opposite edges because those are what the top is going to connect to. And that's everything. That's all of the pieces I need to assemble two nightstands. This is one of those rare projects where I can cut all of the pieces at the beginning to their final size and then just assemble it. The only exception to that is the lower panel on each of the nightstands. I need to cut that down to an exact fit and I'll need to notch out the corners. So that one's a little oversized. And also the two drawer faces. I'm gonna cut those down a little bit smaller too to fit into that opening. But everything else is ready to assemble. The uh, first thing I'm gonna do is assemble the two sides. And to help me do that, I've cut out a scrap board. This is just a piece of plywood that's six inches wide. I can use that as a spacer to align these frame pieces. That's gonna let me keep the distance of this top frame piece and this lower frame piece consistent on both sides. But for now, what I need to do is just kind of clamp this together so I can put these pocket screws in. Again, these are the large holes down here and it's gonna screw into the top up here. But since the legs are one inch thick and these two pieces are three quarters of an inch thick, I want this reveal here to be on the front side. So in other words, it's going to look like this. And what I'll do is I'll just clamp it up this way and then flip it over so I can get the screws in. Now 
now those pieces are flush with the top and with the back. And just as a reminder, if you're using hardwood like this cherry and maple, make sure you use the fine thread pocket screws, not the coarse thread. Coarse thread would only be for softwoods like pine. Now I can join together those two side assemblies. And this is just really a matter of taking my time to make sure that each of those pieces is in the right location and squared up and clamped down before I drive the screws in place. I just want to make it clear what's going on here. I've chamfered these bottom edges of all of these rails. The top edges aren't chamfered because that's going to go right up against the top of the nightstand. So these are all set back a little bit and they all meet up in the corner there. Now I can cut down this lower panel to fit inside of here with the notches for those corners. Here I'm just using my jigsaw to cut out these corner notches that'll fit around the legs. So in order to test out that lower shelf, I'm gonna to need to remove one or two of these braces. We'll see if I can get by with just removing one. I just needed to make that notch a little bit bigger in one side. And of course, I'm gonna put a chamfer around all these edges. Here I can attach the top of the table using four screws. So notice what I'm doing here is I've just put the two screws on this apron, not the front and back piece. This is typical table construction here so that this will allow the boards to expand out this way and contract in this way if they need to. And I can attach the lower shelf using those pocket holes. I want to talk just a moment about wood movement. Wood is, of course, an organic material that's going to expand and contract due to changes in humidity. In wetter weather of the year, wood will expand and in the dry months, it'll contract. This can lead to a board buckling if it's not allowed to expand or split if there's no room for it to contract. The amount of wood movement varies depending on the species of the wood you're using and your geographical location. This is something that woodworkers need to be aware of and yet it's also something 
something that I think a lot of woodworkers spend way too much time stressing over. So first of all, this only applies to solid lumber. If you're using plywood or other manufactured materials, you don't need to concern yourself with wood movement at all. Second, expansion and contraction only occurs across the grain of the wood. In other words, the width of a board will change, not its length, at least to any significant amount. Third, I think this is the most important thing to know. The wider the board is, the more noticeable that change can be. The amount of expansion and contraction in say a, a two inch wide board is usually so tiny it won't affect your project at all and it probably isn't worth worrying about. But when you edge join boards together to make a wide panel, those tiny measurements compound and a wide panel then acts like a single board. So this is where wood movement is usually a concern. Usually you see this on tabletops, a large tabletop, say a three foot wide tabletop could move maybe a quarter inch and that needs to be addressed or that solid wood tabletop is likely to crack over time. This is why you never want to glue solid wood tabletops down. A typical solution is to screw the top to the apron in such a way that allows the wood to expand and contract as the seasons change. The good news here is that you really don't need to worry too much about wood movement in smaller projects. Using an online wood movement calculator tells me that this cherry might move nine one hundredths of an inch at that wide. That's barely over a sixteenth of an inch or about a thirty second of an inch in each direction. That's almost irrelevant. But still, it can't hurt to build this project accordingly. So the screws are going to allow the top and the lower shelf to move. And then I've cut these notches in the corners slightly larger than they need to be so that the wood doesn't get trapped between the frame and legs. And I think adding chamfers in that little gap makes it look more intentional. The drawer runners get glued into place. I'm using half inch plywood to make the drawer box and quarter inch plywood for the base of the drawers. But if you wanted to be a little bit more frugal, you could just use half inch plywood for the, dr the drawer bottom too. I'm gonna join all of the drawer sides together using rabbit joints. To make those, I've set my rip fence a half inch away from my saw blade and I'll just kind of cut out that notch halfway through the wood. By the way, I always want to point out that using the miter gauge in combination with the rip fence is fine and safe and normal for these kinds of cuts, rabbit cuts and dados that don't cut all the way through the wood because there's no cutoff piece that could potentially get trapped between the saw blade and the rip fence and thrown back at you. If you're making any kind of cut all the way through a board, never use the miter gauge in combination with the rip fence like this. And I'll cut a rabbit along one long edge of each board to hold the bottom in place. I'm gonna temporarily clamp these drawer frames together using my strap clamp. That way I can get an accurate measurement for the bottom. The main thing you gotta be careful with if you're using one of these strap, strap clamps is not to crank it down too tight because it'll actually cause this half inch plywood to just bend in and give you an inaccurate measurement. Now I can measure the inside of this rabbit joint. Perfect. I'll just glue this together. Those rabbit joints give it plenty of strength, but the main reason I like to use those is because it helps just keep this box square. It's sort of a self-squaring joint. And I think it's important to drop this bottom in at the same time before 
the rabbit joints on the ends dry. This bottom of this glued in place is really what's gonna give it most of its strength and stability. And it's not a bad idea to check, make sure that it's square. I used to use bricks to do this, but we ended up using those bricks somewhere in the yard, I think. For some reason, I don't have my bricks anymore. I probably should have saved some of those. Oh well. I mean, really, I could just raise this up on some two by fours and I could put clamps around it too, but whatever. drawer one drawer so the drawer will slide in like that this drawer face is gonna stop on these runners it'll stop it from going in too far but what I need to do is I need to shave this down a little bit because I don't need it that tight So what I did is I made a chamfer around this whole front face, all four edges, and then just this one bottom edge here. So when this is in place, you can grab a hold of that and pull it open. You could, I guess, traditionally screw this face into the drawer, but I'm going to glue it on instead. I don't see any problem with that. All I need to do is line this up flush with the top of that drawer. I'll finish these with a clear coat of spray lacquer. The nice thing about this cherry is that it's gonna darken up really nicely over the next year or two.